it's paramount and i see it every day like even really good contractors that you know may be selling one and a half two million a year it's the documentation get it done the first time What's up, everybody? Justin with Real Construction Owners Podcast. We have a special guest today, Cam Wade, with Your Large Loss Adjuster, and he has some serious fire content. How you doing, Cam? Doing good, bud. How are you doing? Man, I'm truly blessed and highly favored. Thanks for hopping on a call today. I've been meaning to get with you because in the storm restoration industry, there's so many issues that roofing contractors have. Let's let's dive right in. Before we we go into the meat and potato of this talk, tell us your story. Take us down memory lane. What were you doing before you got into this space? Well, let's see. Well, I, you know, I started out in the construction industry pretty young as a son of a of a father who owned his own general contracting company. So I was there eight years old painting you know, under stairs in those little rooms, you know, the storage closets, and then graduated as I got older into more important things like carrying bundles of shingles up a ladder and then eventually nailing. Um, so that was, has always been a part of my life. Uh, I became an army military police officer and, and had a really enjoyable time serving uh, my community and, and country as well. Um, and then I got back into the, the construction arena as just a door knocking roof salesman, you know, knocking 200 doors in a day and, um, you know, and, and right out of the gates, just having great success. And this was during a time when it was a lot, I'd, I'd say a lot easier for the sales guys out there. Um, so, yeah, that's where, you know, it started. I spent a good 13 years, hopped around to a lot of different roofing companies between Texas and Oklahoma, trying to find the right home. Had, again, some really good success, but also uh, found myself in some, some pretty low times of, you know, self-created uh, hardships through the industry. It's real easy to do. You can have some really high highs. And if you don't know how to manage those high highs, it can come crumbling down really fast. So I've experienced the gambit and really over the past couple of years as the insurance and restoration community has really butted heads, uh, creating it very difficult times for contractors to find success right out of the gates, which means, you know, their policyholders are not seeing successful outcomes from their insurance claims. Um, so that's what really caused me concern because my normal tactics which was you know just really good documentation follow up follow up and making sure it's a real claim before i even file a claim i found so much success in that and had the you know good rebuttals whenever you know and good supplementing going on a good team doing that but after a while over the past couple of years it gets got almost impossible and so that's when i, I decided to make the jump to become a public insurance adjuster and spearhead and be that tip of the spear for not just contractors, but policyholders. So we can all find victories in this and, and make it through these rough times. Nice. So you basically have done it. You've put in the work, you've bumped the doors, you've dealt as a contractor, and, and now you're a public adjuster and you're spearheading your large loss adjuster or your virtual adjuster. That's a well-known brand within the industry. What do you like about it and why why are you so passionate about what you're doing? Well, wow, that's a great question. Thanks, you know, for asking that because I am passionate about it. I really have learned so much as a as a contractor, as a sales professional my entire life, that it's about process. Of course, it starts with the people that care enough to build and take the attention and the time to build a process, the SOPs, the automation and 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 invest that money instead of going out and buying, you know, all these big flashy cars and, and big houses right out of the gate. You know, they took the time and the patience to grow their product and their process and their technology that they all own, um, which gives you the, the most control over that data that's been collected. So I'd say my favorite thing is they make it too easy, too easy for me, for the contractor now, and that we have our app and for the, the policyholder, it's really shortening through the data that we're able to collect. Um, we can see what's working and what's not working, whether it's messaging, uh, whether it's a subject line. 
um, whether it's an argument that worked before and now it's not, you know, we pull in more resources and we have the resources to do that quickly instead of thinking about it, thinking about letting time pass and opportunity go. They find solutions very quickly. So if you're listening and you're a contractor and you don't know what a public adjuster is, basically, in summary, if there's an insurance claim, a fire, a flood, a hailstorm, a tornado, and the homeowner has this damage occur to their property, they basically, the insurance is going to give them a settlement. And it's normally 40, 50, 60 cents on the dollar. And homeowners have the right to hire a public adjuster. Um, can you shine some light to our listeners who don't know what a public adjuster is? Yeah, so basically a public adjuster is the one who fights on the side of the policyholder. We have a fiduciary responsibility to the policyholder to to fight to get them fully indemnified, to get them the money that they deserve. And we help the insurance see what they don't want to see. And we hold them to their promise, which is the policy that their underwriters wrote. And a lot of times they like to forget it or turn a blind eye and hope that you, the contractor, doesn't know what you're doing, as well as the policyholder. The policyholder doesn't really know what they have and what they don't have most of the time. So it's our job to dig into that policy and understand the verbiage and know, hey, that's actually our ammunition. And we're going to use that to our advantage because, hey, you wrote it, Mr. Insurance Carrier, Mrs. Insurance Carrier. This is what you own. Hold, hold fast to your promise. So that's our job. Help them see what they don't want to see and holding them to their promise. What would you say are some holes that you see in uh, for owners in their business uh, that you can shine some light on? Well, that is a tough question. It's a, I have a lot of emotion when it comes to, uh, in that because I, I speak to contractors, business owners every single day, and they're my friends. They're people I care about. Uh, and I hear about the hardships. I talk to their salesmen as well because I go as well and help train them and use help them with the experience that I had as a as a roofing uh, sales representative and help shine some light and help sh again close that sell cycle. Um, so I learn a lot about each of these companies, and I do see, from my honest opinion, and people may get butthurt about it, but I think um, new contract business owners is maybe they had some success really quick success in the industry as a sales rep and then they'll like, do this and they they jump in head first and they got some good capital to get rolling website all that's going they go to all the shows but i think too quickly are they wanting to push the autopilot and just enjoy the riches you know that they dreamt in their brain and that they see in all these different storm groups and these different you know conventions that they have the big, you know, there's a, a big false narrative, I think, that people buy into the flashiness and they, they forget about really what got them there. They forget to slow down. And, and instead of just purchasing a, a, a sales system and just leaving it up to your guys to do it, you know, if you're a new guy, you sh a new owner and even an old owner, if what you've been doing hasn't been working and all you do is churn sales guys, churn sales guys, there's a reason. And it's usually you, the business owner that just can't slow down and get out of your own head. You're just, you're, you're just as important as the next guy. You know, we're all the same out here. Um, slow down and teach your guys and, and, and stick to a process, actually build your SOPs, believe in them. And of course, like, you know, mission statements, what do you believe in? What is your moral compass? I've seen a lot of, they stray away from it. They put it on a website They'll even get on podcasts and, 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 and be hyped up of, you know, what they know the right things to say. But in all actuality, if, if you were to ask the people that work for them, they could really quickly tell you what the challenges are and where they need help. But they're not being asked, hey, how can I help you today and tomorrow? How can I help you win and find victories? Um, I see that you're not using this. You know, I just got you guys the roofing strategist. Um, sales guide which is great stuff but you gotta you gotta do it and work it and you need i would say as a leader you need to lead from the front yeah was that a bird show. that just flew around your back in your house yeah i've got a pet dove <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome man i used to have a parakeet and it'd fly around my house it was so much fun my, my girlfriend and I uh, rescued it earlier in the this, this season when we had big windstorms here in Texas, and we found it just a little nugget 
on the ground and of course she couldn't leave it. And so now it's, you know, it, it's hard to let go. It's part of the family now. And it's funny. Oh, that's, that's hilarious, man. So <laughs> let's change gears a little bit. You, you've, you've worked with a lot of different companies and you just said something powerful. You said something about a lot of companies are churning salesmen in and out. They're coming and going and, you know, leaving the company. What, when working with these multiple companies, what were the top things that you liked that if you could tell the owners who are listening that they could implement to retain their sales reps better? Um, again, lead from the front, teach, show, you know, same thing. And, and, you know, when I was in the military and a weapons instructor, it's like, hey, Cam, enough of this. It's more of this. Show them. Show them how much you care. Give them a reason to stay instead of living out of fear. Like, oh, I don't want to give them too much information. They're going to go start their own business. Well, good for them. And I bet you if you did it the right way and you motivate them and you just let them know that, hey, I just want you to be successful. And if I'm a stepping stone to that next point, that's fine. We'll be friends forever and, and a brand advocate and ambassador you'll be for life. I know I have so many contractors I've worked for before. I love them to death. They've given me so much value that I would, I, when I'm back in town, I, I'll go and, and walk the streets and outdoors with their guys. I'll throw on one of their shirts or just in, in my own, just, we're just a team and, and we'll do it together. I'll show them, you know, Hey, this is, this is what always worked for me. And again, it's just coming back to just taking the time and not being too busy. You're not that busy. A lot of these leaders create busy work. It all looks cool. But really, if you were to go zero five hundred to, you know, the end of the day and filled in per minute, like we did in, in the military is reverse planning. You got your main mission, which is get your guys ready to deploy. And then the by the minute it is planned and scheduled. If you were to ask the business leader, what does your schedule look like? Show me. You're probably going to find they got a lot of fluff and BS in there when they could <laughs> be taking that time. And and in, in putting that time and that value to each and every one of those uh, sales reps, and it, maybe that all that time and, and and information is going into your sales leader. If so, a lot of times the, the contract owner is the sales leader for the most part until they get to a point where they have the financial capital and to be able to hire the right person and trust them. I think that's another probably a whole other topic is completely being able to trust people. I love that. Job. Man, it's, it's, you've referenced it a few times that you were in the military and I appreciate your service first and foremost. And second, you know, I've listened to a ton of Jocko Willett's books and different Navy SEALs and um, different audio books. So let's, let's talk about that a little with, with your service in the military. What are some key takeaways that that you see uh, if, if people were to implement into their con construction business, it would help them succeed. Like the one you just mentioned, you have a main mission and you, you plan every minute to get to that main mission. What's another one that we could learn from you? The team aspect, the buddy system, you know, you're not really doing anything without your battle buddy. And that's from the get go, your accountability buddy. And that is from the day one that's going in and utilizing the, the train together to, uh, weapons maintenance to being on the, the rifle range, you're with your teammate. Uh, we had a lot of exercises that we would do that um, you had your mission of completing this task that you have to pass as, you know, first and foremost. So you think, and you do, maybe you're the fastest one and you're standing at attention because you're proud. I, I, I did this task. I, I broke down this weapon and rebuilt it in less than a minute. This 50 cal, you know, I did it. I'm standing tall, ready for, you know, them to say, you know, at ease, but they don't, we keep, we keep failing. Why? Because the guy four four men down for me or woman isn't completing the task in time. And here I am standing tall, just to make, you know, I'm good to go. But in all reality, what should be happening is you step out and you're going over, you're helping them. You're making sure you're squaring them away. Cause if they're not squared away, then that means you're wrong. They're your team. And to have that emotion and that connection, you go through so much. And it starts with training, breaking them down and, and building back the knowledge into them and the experience to where it becomes muscle memory to care about the person to the left and to the right of them and being able to do the job ahead of you and behind you. 
Um, so that's, I think, a huge takeaway is that just the team atmosphere. I've seen it grow mad success in the industry when you have um, one leader that's a really good sales guy who teams up with a new guy. And, you know, they go through the cycles. And now, now this week, you're spending a week with our, you know, uh, production team and learn from them what really hangs them up when the sales guys don't do their job, when they don't collect all the right data. You, you're making this guy's job a lot harder. And eventually it, it comes down to the sell cycle, the build cycle, you know, shortening all of that. So everyone's more successful, more money, faster. And it just comes down to the team. Really focused awesome. on the team. That's really, really good information. You know, accountability, a uh, battle buddy. I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm taking this, I'm asking you these questions for our listeners, but really I'm taking it for my own business, just so you know. <laughs> um, as far as your service and what you're doing, you're leading the way, you're helping contractors, you're helping homeowners getting what they're supposed to get after like a claim. What, talk to, talk to the contractors and tell them about documentation of these situations, these insurance claims, how important it is and uh, what they need to be doing. Oh, it's, it's paramount. And I see it every day, like even really good contractors that, you know, maybe selling, you know, one and a half, two million a year. It's the documentation, get it done the first time. If you're, you know, gas is almost $5 a gallon, depending on where you live and, you can't afford to go back on that first visit. You should be getting all your pictures systematically, whether you're going counterclockwise or, or clockwise, do it to a system, mirror it, do it the same way every time. Cause you want to paint that picture and act like one day this is going to go front in front of a jury of 12. So you better document it and to where it makes it so easy for that lame person to understand, Oh, that looks like hail damage or that looks very deep. And that's not just cosmetic damage that scraped the paint and dented and punctured. You know, you want to tell a story and do it all on the first visit. If you can't obtain the policy on the first visit, at least get it that expectation set that I will need this to even start a claim before we even do. I need to know what I'm about to get you into as well as get myself into. So we've got to get, you know, on the first visit, it's aim small, miss small. Punt, you know, get it all done that first visit. Eliminate those go backs. Those go backs are time time vampires. They're gasoline. They're they're all of your resources. Why do you want to go back? The only time I want to go back is to collect a check and to get referrals and to stop by and say hi. Roof looks great. It's it's your birthday. Just want to come by and inspect it for its, its roof birthday and and also ask you, you know, take them down memory lane of that experience, that whole customer experience and let them tell you, man, yeah, this roof looks great. Everyone stops by and tells me, oh, Susan, your roof looks great. Like, awesome. Well, with that being said, hon, who else can I help that you know and love? So you always, there's no problem with going back, but you got to have, you know, it needs to be for the right reason. So first and foremost, to be more successful before you even need a public adjuster, you should be treating every one of those claims and those visits as a very serious deal as it's if your grandmother's collect that data like you were a a forensic detective and if you see i just made a, a post about this the other day um if you watch the show the first 48 you know it's a it's a pretty dramatic it's really tough to watch it's about you know murder and people getting you know killed and what happens in that first first 48 hours and why those first 48 hours are so important it's the same thing with the lead speed to lead and for collecting your evidence as quickly as possible and in very detailed because a storm could come wash it away. You never know what could happen. So get it that first visit. That's probably some of my best advice. The biggest challenge I see daily is slow down, take the time, or you're going to pay for it later. Man, that's good. <laughs> don't waste time. Don't waste gas. And take photos as if you're going to have to present it in front of a jury of 12. That is dropping bombs right there for, for anybody and everybody. Now let's talk about uh, what you feel is the best process that, in your business that you're most proud of that your large loss adjuster has. That is the coupling it with our, our technology over at your virtual adjuster. Cause with your virtual adjuster, if you have a claim that's $50,000 and below, we have an app that you can literally just click GPS that's the house. Yep. Confirm that's the correct property. Now you're going to start taking photos, pop, 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 pop. 
and then you're going to upload any documents, whether it's a denial letter, whether whether it's the, the policy declarations, whatever you may have. Boom. And what does that do? It gets verified and immediately sends out a letter of representation to your policyholder. Of course, you set those expectations. Um, if it's someone I need to talk to to you know help really you know explain this this the process, then we do that. But it's to automate and make the process so much faster that they can do that. They can create that LOR gets sent out once it's signed. Our office immediately sends out that letter of representation to the carrier, and then we immediately start taking all that data and start compiling uh, estimates, getting engineers involved. Everything starts getting pushed. That file is being pushed. There's automation to where they're reminded when we haven't been contacted after 14 days, you know, they're getting touched again. Every, you know, every 10 days, the contractor is getting communicated with via text, email, phone call, whatever they choose on the status of that claim, which is another big challenge contractors and policyholders have when it comes to PA uh, firms, is there's the complete breakdown of communication. These yeah. other firms are, are highly overloaded because they don't have the systems. They don't have the right technology in place because they haven't invested in it and they haven't taken the time. And that goes with contractors and PAs. It happens across the board. So that's the biggest thing I'm proud of is the, the people, something I've had nothing to do with, the people that own, operate, and the people behind the scenes that have built this system, this app, that is, we're about to have like two more releases of new technology, new capabilities of it. Um, you know, whenever payments are, are issued, you get notification. Having that knowledge and having those answers for your client is, is, is priceless. It makes you look like a winner, like someone who's on top of their game. And that, again, is a victory and provides more trust and get you more referrals and get you bigger jobs, more jobs. And again, when you, you close that time gap of that sell cycle and the build cycle, the payment cycle, life is easier. You don't have those stresses that wake you up in the middle of the night. Did I forget to do that? Did I do this? Did I send that supplement? I mean, it's the technology and the, and the uh, automation and the SOPs that we have that I had nothing to do with. That's what I'm the most proud of. And it's, that comes from the people. Bro, that was some fire. Like I, I, I can tell like your virtual adjuster, I've seen them scaling. I've seen their ads, which is tied to your large loss adjuster. They're, they're one and one mm -hmm. together. I've seen that they're scaling and it must be because of the automations, the processes, the technology. And you know what? I might have to give it a go. I might have to turn in a claim to y'all because I, 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 I have PAs and you're right. They do lag on communication. You're right. They don't you know, give me updates or my clients updates. And so that's really, really good for you to share that. Now, I want to ask you a personal question as far as uh, investing goes, because contractors, yes, you know, we're learning from what you're saying, but what's your, what is an investment that you've made in any area of your life that has surprised you? Could be real estate, personal growth, crypto. I'll give you a couple. Um, first and foremost, investing in yourself and knowing thyself is probably the best investment uh, I've ever made. And when you know yourself, uh, strengths, weaknesses, um, it really helps you to help other people and to be, to operate the most optimal that you can. Because I, I do believe that's this gift that we have of life it doesn't need to be wasted. And it's a slap in the face when, when we do operate at a subpar level in which I have many of us, most of us have, you know, we just don't live up to what we're meant to be. And so personal growth, just digging in and breaking yourself down and, and seeing who you really are and how you can grow and get be better. That's number one, two, really getting into the, uh, what some call infinite baking or, uh, you know, universal, um, term life policies that you could fund and start borrowing from those, you know, from those, that's, that's something I've seen a huge surprise in that, uh, you know, we burn so much money on frivolous, you know, crap. I do. I'm a huge time fisherman. <laughs> I love kayak fishing. Uh, so there's very few things that I'll, I'll splurge on myself on and, and, and spend as well as on others. Whereas like, dang, if I would have just taken like 20 grand and just thrown it earlier, like just 10 years earlier, thrown it in this interest bearing account that I could actually borrow against. And, you know, uh, it could have been a lot further than I am now. 
but I'm, I'm, I still have time. And so does, you know, everyone else, um, depending on what your resources and how quickly you can act, but the, getting into those utilizing life insurance policies to your advantage and not just thinking about death, you know, that yeah, it can be utilized while you're still alive. Um, and they have so many benefits as well. 100% infinite banking is a topic that too far, far too few people know about and the ability to put money into a life insurance policy and become your own bank. Uh, mm -hmm. That I should definitely reach out to my, my guy and have him on this podcast because I'm 100% uh, in par and parallel with, with that strategy. This has been fun, Wade, uh, Cam, Cam Wade. If, if somebody wants to reach out to you or, or, and learn more about your large loss adjuster or the sister company, your virtual adjuster, how should they do so? Uh, there, of course you check us out on Facebook um, or you can email me at cam, that's C-A-M, at Y-L-L-A dot claims. Awesome, awesome. I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for hopping on our call. And I thank you. I really appreciate the time and, and the opportunity. You have an awesome day. You too, Cam. Take care.